This episode of the Kintsugi Podcast is brought to you by Pause, Breathe, Reflect, which can help you bring mindfulness to your everyday moments. Hey there, it's Michael. Welcome to Friday, my fellow like-hearted humans. On Fridays, I like to share a moment with you to pause, breathe, reflect before you slide into the weekend. I started my practice over 20 years ago when I was feeling completely overwhelmed. I knew I had to slow things down. So I started my practice and I called it pause, breathe, reflect. And the reflect element was essential because it created space for me to practice gratitude and set my intentions on what kind of ripple I wanted to ripple into the world. When I left the hospital, I continued my studies, discovered MBSR, and became a qualified teacher. And now, I love sharing the value of mindfulness with humans all around the world through the Kintsugi podcast and our app. So we can change our relationship with stress, sleep better, and bring mindfulness to our everyday moments. So mindfulness can be a way of living as opposed to some transactional thing we do during our morning routine. So if you're ready, let's do a short practice together. One of my favorite things to do is to help others start a meditation practice and help them live mindfully. I still remember when I started all those years ago, I really didn't know what to do and I didn't have someone who I could turn to. And today, the world of mindfulness and meditation can feel really big, can almost feel intimidating, and opinions run the spectrum. There's still a segment of mindfulness and meditation that can feel a little woo-woo to many. It can feel a little too spiritual. Then there's breath work that can feel somewhat intense at times. And then there are different practices that run the gamut. Here at Pause, Breathe, Reflect, we believe in a practical, relatable approach. We believe in shorter practices done consistently with some frequency over time can make a difference in one's life. It can transform someone's life. It's what's happened for me and countless others who are part of our like-hearted community here at Pause, Breathe, Reflect. Two practices that are pillars for us here are loving kindness, which we do live via Zoom in our app every Friday. It's a wonderful practice. And it's a good one to do as you're beginning. Another one of our cornerstone practices is the body scan, which I used a lot as I was going through my recovery. One question I get often is, well, how do we do it? How am I supposed to sit? Am I supposed to be in lotus position? And the answer is no. And if you don't know what lotus position is, congratulations, you're a human. That's sitting cross-legged. For meditation, for a practice, you can do it seated. You can do it lying down. You can practice standing up. And you can even do a movement practice or a walking meditation. Because some days, the body just wants to move. It doesn't feel comfortable or it doesn't feel right to sit still. So you can make this practice your practice legitimately and come into any posture. And for me, I do all four throughout the week. Another question I get is, should I close my eyes? And there are a lot of feelings about this. Some people will claim, 
eyes open. And that's a way of doing it. I often do a body scan lying down with my eyes open because I have a tendency of falling asleep sometimes. But generally speaking, I close my eyes. But others have a soft gaze. They may look down at the tip of their nose. So all three approaches, closing your eyes, keeping them open, or having a soft gaze, can work. And none of them are better than the others. So again, make the practice your practice. That is something you'll hear me say often in our Pause, Breathe, Reflect community. I want you to create a practice that makes sense for you, something that you can do with consistency. So it doesn't become something transactional, something you think you should be doing, but rather it's the way you're living. It's the way you want to be. And this leads me to the last question for this week. But if you have other questions, feel free to reach out to me on social media or just email me. And I'll be happy to answer your question on a future episode of the Kintsuki Podcast. So a common question I get is, when should I do it? When should I practice, Michael? And my answer is, do it at a time where it's easy for you to begin a practice. Some people like to practice in the beginning, in the evening, right before bed. They might practice gratitude, and that will help them drift off to sleep so they can have a restful night of recovery. Some people might like to do it in the morning. So I'm focusing in on when you begin a practice. I started my practice in the morning before I went into my rehab. Other people like to do it during the course of the day. And here's the thing. A lot of folks are busy nowadays. You are as well. So there's a whole bunch of people who don't have 10 minutes or 20 minutes in the morning to meditate. There are too many things going on. And this is the beauty of pause, breathe, reflect. I emphasize shorter practices that you can do consistently and frequently over time. And the science that's coming out nowadays validates that shorter practices have real value. So if you don't have 10 minutes or 20 minutes in the morning, well, hey, congratulations, you're human. But I bet you have maybe five times throughout the day where you have two minutes. So it might be two minutes in the morning, two minutes mid-morning, two minutes at lunch, two minutes in the afternoon, and two minutes in the evening. And there you have 10 minutes. And now you're doing it in smaller bite-sized pieces, which is easier to do, especially as you're trying to develop a healthy habit in a way of living mindfully. So you're going to do it with some frequency, but again, Short little steps, baby steps at first, consistently over time. And you do that for a while and you'll look back and you'll realize this is just the way I live. I live in a pause, breathe, reflect way, which helps you show up for all of your moments in a different way. So let's do one minute together. This is how I started. I started off really small, just starting with my breath. So come in when you're ready into a comfortable posture. As I mentioned before, you could be seated. You might be in your car. You could be walking. You can also be standing or lying down. You can also close your eyes if you'd like or leave them open or have that soft gaze I referenced earlier. And we'll do one minute. And we'll begin with a healthy breath in. See if you can breathe up through your nose. And just feel your lungs expand. Notice the pause at the top. And then release the breath however it feels right to do so. You can swoosh it out. You can release it slowly.
And then take a couple more of these, breathing up fully. And then releasing the breath out. Allow your focus to remain on the breath. But if your attention gets pulled away, no worries. It's all part of it. You simply come back to your breath. All right, nice job. That's a good start. So we start again with a minute or two. We do that once a day. And then we might add a few more times throughout the day as we go forward. And this is how we develop a really healthy habit that can take us down the pathway to living mindfully. And always remember this between now and the next time we practice together. And I hope to see you at one of our live practices via our app. We do loving kindness every Friday. When you meet a challenging moment and they will come up in life because that's life. Remember your breath. Slow things down. Take a healthy breath in and a slow releasing breath out. And remember that you've got this and we've got you. Together, we're going to put a beautiful ripple into the world. I hope you enjoyed this moment to slow things down. And if you found it valuable, I hope you'll share it with a friend. You can find other practices like this one on our Pause, Breathe, Reflect app. And you can find the app wherever you happen to find apps. And you always have an open invitation to join one of our live practices throughout the week with other like-hearted humans. It's a space where everyone belongs, regardless of who you voted for, where you live, how much money you make, who you love, and if you pray. So I hope you'll join us. The only thing we ask is that you bring a loving heart to our space. On Tuesday, I'll share another inspiring story of connection with you on the Kintsugi podcast. Until then, have a meaningful weekend and ripple something worth rippling into the world. <laughs>